In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The Lord be with you, and with your spirit. My brothers and sisters, let us acknowledge our sins, and so prepare ourselves to celebrate these sacred mysteries. Have mercy on us, O Lord, for we have sinned against you. Show us, O Lord, your mercy, and grant us your salvation. And may Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Let us pray. O God, who renew the world through the mysteries beyond all telling, grant, we pray, that your church may be guided by your eternal design and not be deprived of your help in this present age. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. A reading from the book of the prophet Isaiah. Thus says the Lord, I am about to create a new heavens and a new earth. The former things shall not be remembered or come to mind, but be glad and rejoice forever in what I am creating. For I am about to create Jerusalem as a joy and its people as a delight. I will rejoice in Jerusalem and delight in my people. No more shall the sound of weeping be heard in it or the cry of distress. No more shall there be in it an infant that lives but a few days, or an old person who does not live out a lifetime. For one who dies at a hundred years will be considered a youth, and one who falls short of a hundred will be considered a curse. They shall build houses and inhabit them. They shall plant vineyards and eat their fruit. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. I will praise you, Lord, for you have rescued me. I will praise you, Lord, for you have rescued me. I will extol you, O Lord, for you have drawn me up and did not let my foes rejoice over me. O Lord, you brought up my soul from Sheol, restored to life from among those who have gone down into the pit. I will praise you, Lord, for you have rescued me. Sing praises to the Lord, O you his faithful ones and give thanks to his holy name. For his anger is but for a moment, his favor is for a lifetime. Weeping may linger for the night, but joy comes with the morning. I will praise you, Lord, for you have rescued me. Hear, O Lord, and be gracious to me, O Lord, my helper. You have turned my mourning into dancing. O Lord, my God, I will thank you forever. I will praise you, Lord, for you have rescued me. Praise to you, Lord, King of eternal glory. Praise to you, Lord, King of eternal glory. Seek good and not evil so that you may live, and the Lord will be with you. Praise to you, Lord, King of eternal the Lord be with you and with your spirit. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to John. Glory to you, O Lord. After spending two days in Samaria, Jesus went from that place to Galilee, for Jesus himself had testified that a prophet has no honor in the prophet's own country. When he came to Galilee, the Galileans welcomed him, since they had seen all that he had done in Jerusalem at the festival for they too had gone to the festival. Then he came again to Cana in Galilee, where he had changed water into wine. Now there was a royal official whose son lay ill in Capernaum. When he heard that Jesus had come from Judea to Galilee, he went and begged him to come down and heal his son, for he was at the point of death. Then Jesus said to him, Unless you see signs and wonders, you will not believe. The official said to him, Sir, come down before my little boy dies. Jesus said to him, Go, your son will live. The man believed the word that Jesus spoke to him and started on his way. As he was going down, his slaves met him and told him that his child was alive. 
So he asked them the hour when he began to recover, and they said to him, Yesterday, at one in the afternoon, the fever left him. The father realized that this was the hour that Jesus said to him, Your son will live. So he himself believed along with his whole household. Now this was the second sign that Jesus did after coming from Judea to Galilee. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. Today's Gospel comes in the stream of the signs in John's Gospel. And each sign is a, a building block that builds on the other. And so you'll notice that at the beginning, it actually points out that Jesus, after spending some time in Samaria, and that's for obviously the story of the Samaritan woman we heard a little while ago, and then he travels and it makes reference to Cana and Galilee, and then the sign begins when Jesus is, receives the plea of a royal official who wants his son to be healed by Jesus. And Jesus says some kind of cryptic words, which underline the very meaning of what a sign is, is that Jesus says, unless you see signs and wonders, you will not believe. Now here's the thing that you do not get from a text. What was the tone of voice that Jesus used when he said those words? Was it an impatient rebuke? Was it a statement, ugh, unless you see signs and wonders you won't believe, kind of like a ugh kind of a thing? Or was it a simple statement of fact, unless you see signs and wonders you won't believe? I think it's the latter. And I'll explain my hypothesis why. Because something that I mentioned on yesterday's gospel and yesterday's homily is that by our nature as creatures, it is hard for us, nay, almost impossible, to see God, let alone to see God and live. God then has to mediate his presence and mediate his identity through the world that he has created, because only God can see God. Only God can know the divine substance. Only God can know himself. And so the process of revelation that God has to do in us is to make us like himself. And this is why knowing God is not merely an intellectual exercise. It's moral and spiritual. Which is why no matter how many books on theology you read, no matter how much you understand about the church's teaching, unless you live it, you won't understand. And this is also why the church has to put a prescription on those who teach. Do their lives match the gospel that they preach? Spoiler alert, at least in my case, uh, nope, um, I do my best. But therein lies another interesting paradox. Is it entirely the moral striving that has us practice what we preach. Because above all, above all, do we trust in God's mercy enough to ask for mercy? I've often found that scrupulosity is a lack of faith. Now, here's the strange paradox of it. Um, the scrupulous person is so overburdened by their overactive conscience that sometimes it's an act of mercy to not inform them of their sins because straining a gnat and swallowing a camel, they will obsess over their small mistakes, not realizing that probably their greatest spiritual impediment is the vanity of their spirituality the incapacity of letting God love them. And this is the problem. They can't. A scrupulous person can't just let someone love them. And so it's a pitiable condition, a sad condition, but a condition nonetheless. 
So one of the intellectual exercises in terms of overcoming this problem is realizing the difference between the sign and which is signified. There's two different things. And I think this is also why unless we see signs and wonders we will not believe is because we can't see the thing in itself. We need to see the sign that points to it. But now, now knowing that there are incapacity to see the thing in itself and only that which signifies it, it helps us then understand Jesus' words. Unless you see it, you won't believe. Which is why faith comes with the word. Jesus says, your child will be well. What are the exact words? Go, your son will live. Now, the man could very easily say, but Jesus, please come with me. And there have been occasions when Jesus does that. In fact, there's passages in the Synoptic Gospels, and what's what I call the Mark and Sandwich, and I want to make sure that I get the, para the, the story right. There is the one person who pleads, a Jairus, I believe, who pleads Jesus to heal his child, and then the woman with the hemorrhages says, let me just touch his cloak and I'll be healed. And it shows the dichotomy in faith. The woman with the hemorrhage believes more, but Jesus is willing to go through more steps to help Jairus and his child. Because the person needs more steps, but the strength of faith of the woman with the hemorrhages reveals something greater. Do we need signs of Jesus' presence, or do we take him at his word? He says, I love you. Do we believe him? Are we willing to then let him <laughs> work his magic, if you will? He says, go home. Your child will be well. Do we then say, no, but I need you with me. Do we trust his word? That is when we go past the visible signification of Jesus and his person. And which is why I believe that when he finally leaves and goes to the Father, he does in fact say, unless I leave you, the Holy Spirit cannot come. These passages which can baffle us can teach us what faith means. Are we willing to walk a difficult and dangerous and sometimes lonely journey because we trust that he's with us and has not abandoned us? Is that our hope? Is that our joy? And here's the trick and the fun part. Go ahead and screw up. Go ahead and make mistakes. It's not as if Jesus doesn't know that you're going to make mistakes. He already knows. And he still has this tender compassion. Because who we appear to be is not yet who we are. It's not simply that we can't see God and the truth of who God is, much less can we see others and see who they really are, but we even can't look upon ourselves and see who we really are. The consolation for the scrupulous person is this. You're a bad judge of character. Bad, 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 bad. Because God is smarter than you, wiser than you, <laughs> gooder. <laughs> He's gooder than you. And he loves you. Don't deny it. Trust it. And that, for me, is the beauty of some of the sacraments. Have you ever gone to confession? said your sins, 
as best as you can remember them, received your absolution, done your penance, and not feel forgiven? Well, Yoda was wrong. Don't trust your feelings. Trust the word, the word that has been given to you. I absolve you of your sins. Take, eat, this is my body. I am with you always until the end of the age. So when he says go, your son will be healed, your son will live. Take the time to reflect on what that means in your life. The official is told that the child will live and he believes. And so when he goes home, he's told that the child lived and he could very easily have said, well, why did I go on that stupid journey to go and see Jesus? What a waste of my time. He was going to get better anyway. Faith also means being a detective, gathering the evidence, figuring out what is really going on. I suspect that God allowing this tragedy to befall our world is preparing us for something better, a conversion, of repentance. I think one benefit that has already come is we are not really <laughs> paying attention to celebrities as much anymore. Thanks be to God. Priests are beginning to feel the pain of not being with their people and getting more time to pray. And the people of God need to relearn how beautiful it is to be near our Lord. Because signs not only teach us by their signification, but sometimes by their absence. God speaks not only in loud shouts, but in the silence of the heart. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation. For through your goodness we have received the bread we offer you. Fruit of the earth and work of human hands, it will become for us the bread of life. Blessed be God forever. By the mystery of this water and wine, may we come to share in the divinity of Christ, who humbled himself to share in our humanity. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received the wine we offer you. Fruit of the vine and work of human hands, it will become our spiritual drink. Blessed be God forever. Humble spirit of contrite hearts, yet accepted by you, O Lord. And may our sacrifice in your sight this day be pleasing to you, Lord God. Wash me, O Lord, from my iniquity. Cleanse me from my sins. Pray, my brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. And may the Lord accept this sacrifice at your hands for the praise and glory of his name, for our good and the good of all his holy church. May we receive, O Lord, we pray, the effects of this offering dedicated to you, so that we may be cleansed from earthly way, earthly, old earthly ways and be renewed by growth in heavenly life, through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you and with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and just. It is truly right and just. Our duty and our salvation always and everywhere to give you thanks. Lord, Holy Father, almighty and eternal God, through Christ our Lord. For by your gracious gift each year, your faithful await the sacred Paschal feasts with the joy of minds made pure so that more eagerly intent on prayer and on the works of charity and participating in the mysteries by which they have been reborn, they may be led to the fullness of grace that you bestow on your sons and daughters. And so with angels and archangels, with thrones and dominions, 
and with all the hosts and powers of heaven, we sing the hymn of your glory as without end we acclaim. Sanctus, Sanctus, Sanctus Dominus Deus Sabaoth, Pleni sunt celi eterna, Gloria Tua, Hosanna in excelsis, Benedictus, qui venit in nomine Domini, Hosanna in excelsis. You are indeed holy, O Lord, and all you have created rightly gives you praise. For through your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, by the power and working of the Holy Spirit, you give life to all things and make them holy. And you never cease to gather a people to yourself, so that from the rising of the sun to its setting, a pure sacrifice may be offered to your name. Therefore, O Lord, we humbly implore you, by the same Spirit, graciously make holy these gifts we have brought to you for consecration, that they may become the body and blood of your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, at whose command we celebrate these mysteries. For on the night he was betrayed, he himself took bread, and giving you thanks, he said the blessing, broke the bread, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice, and giving you thanks, he said the blessing, and gave the chalice to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith, we proclaim your death, O Lord, and profess your resurrection until you come again. Therefore, Lord, as we celebrate the memorial of the saving passion of your Son, his wondrous resurrection and ascension into heaven, and as we look forward to his second coming, we offer you in thanksgiving this holy and living sacrifice. Look, we pray, upon the oblation of your church and recognizing the sacrificial victim by whose death you will to reconcile us to yourself. Grant that we, who are nourished by the body and blood of your Son and filled with this Holy Spirit, may become one body, one spirit in Christ. May he make of us an eternal offering to you, so that we may obtain an inheritance with your elect, especially with the most blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with blessed Joseph, her spouse, with your blessed apostles and glorious martyrs, St. Peter, St. Paul, St. Trebius of Mongorievo, St. Catherine of Alexandria, St. Catherine of Siena, St. Thomas Aquinas, St. Teresa of Avila, St. John of the Cross, and with all the saints on whose constant intercession in your presence we rely for unfailing help. May the sacrifice of our reconciliation, we pray, O Lord, advance the peace and salvation of all the world. We adv advance the peace... Be pleased to confirm in faith and charity our pilgrim church on earth with your servant Francis our Pope and Gary our Bishop, the order of bishops, all the clergy and the entire people you have gained for your own. Listen graciously to the prayers of this family whom you have summoned before you. In your compassion, O merciful Father, gather to yourself all your children scattered throughout the world. And to our departed brothers and sisters and to all who are pleasing to you at their passing from this life, give kind admittance to your kingdom there we hope to enjoy forever the fullness of your glory through Christ our Lord, through whom we bestow on the world all that is good. Through him and with him and in him, O God Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Amen. At the 
our Savior's command, and for my divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy, we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Saviour, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace, grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always, and with your spirit. On you stay, qui tolis peccata mundi, Miserere nobis, on you stay, qui tolis peccata mundi, miserere nobis, on you stay, qui tolis peccata mundi, dona nobis pace. <clears throat> Behold the Lamb of God, behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word and my soul shall be healed. I will place my spirit within you and make you walk according to my laws and my judgments you shall keep and observe, says the Lord. Let us pray. May your holy gifts, O Lord, we pray, give us life by making us new and by sanctifying us, lead us to things eternal, through Christ our Lord. Amen. Each and every time I celebrate one of these Masses here in my house, this division between the signified and the signifier becomes clearer and clearer to me. You are isolated from him, and I'm isolated from you. And in a way, the unity of the body of Christ is what holds us together.
I don't know how to put it any better, and I haven't put it well. But even though we're only connected by this little machine, we're connected by him. And one day, I hope to be reunited with you again in our proper home inside that church. The Lord be with you and with your spirit. Bow down for the blessing. Renew your people within and without, O Lord, and since it is your will that they may be unhindered by bodily delights, give them, we pray, perseverance in their spiritual intent, through Christ our Lord. Amen. And may Almighty God bless you, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Go forth, the Mass is ended. Thanks be to God.